Welcome to the eighth part of the Godot Tower Defense tutorial series. In this tutorial, we're going to be having a look at how we can make sure that our towers are tracking our enemies so that in the next tutorial, we can start shooting. Let's get started. The first thing we'll have to do is make sure that our tower or turret can see which enemy is within range. To do that, I'm going to switch over to the gun tier one scene. You can, of course, open that on the bottom left under your turrets folder. I'm going to right click the main node. I'm going to add a new child node, and that is going to be an area 2D. Now, an area 2D, you immediately see, comes with an exclamation mark because it needs a coalition shape. So we'll add a coalition shape. And the coalition shape has an exclamation mark because it needs a shape. And in this case, we're going to choose for a circle shape 2D. Now, as you can see, the circle shape 2D is now offset from the turret because we have set an offset for the gun itself. So we're going to select the area 2D and we're going to give it the same offset, which was 32 by 32. You can see that here in the base, it was the offset of 32 by 32. Now our coalition shape is in the middle of the turret, but of course this is nowhere near the range that we need for our turrets. We have already dictated the range that our turrets have within our singleton game data. So when we scroll down here in the file manager and we open up that game data sheet, we can see that for the gun tier one, we had envisioned that it would have a range of 350. Now this range is a diameter and the coalition shape when we open up the shape, you do that by clicking on circle shape, you can see it has a radius. And of course, the radius is half the diameter. So we have to push 175 for the range. Now we have an area 2D on our gun or turret. And let's rename that area 2D to range. Now, the way that an area 2D works is pretty similar to a physics body, just like the physics body, the area 2D takes a coalition shape, but instead of actually physically colliding, is going to be reporting with signals, or at least we can set that up, which other physics body are entering the area. And that's of course perfect because our tanks are kinematic bodies, physics bodies. So we're going to go and have range selected. And while we have range selected, we can go over to note, to signals, and we're going to be connecting the body entered and body exited signal. So we right click them, we connect them, and we'll connect them to the script of gun tier one. We'll click the range again, make sure that we go over to body exited, and then again to gun tier one. Now you see that we have these two functions and I'm going to immediately cut them away with control X because of course these functions are going to be exactly the same for every single type of turret in the game. So it's much better to put these functions on the turrets script that all these different turrets are inheriting from. So we're going to make sure that we're going to find turrets. We can simply use the search bar here in the file manager. We're going to open up our turrets.gd. We'll give this a couple of enters and we'll paste these functions in the main or inherited script so that now these two functions are available for all turrets in the game. What we're gonna do is on the top here, we're gonna define a variable and that is going to be the enemy array and that is going to be an empty array. Now, as you can see on range body entered and on range body exited, they report a body and that body is a node reference to the actual body that is entering the area 2D. So the moment that a tank enters the range, we're going to take the enemy array. We are going to append the array with a new variable or a new entry, and we're going to uh, enter the body. However, the body that is actually entering the area 2D is the kinematic body. If we have a quick look at the tank, what that actually means, I'm going to look for the blue tank scene. When you look at the blue tank, we have this kinematic body and that kinematic body is going to be triggering that area 2D. However, the actual tank that we want that will have a position to which we need to point our turret is the actual path, follow 2D, that is blue tank. So we actually want to add the parent of this kinematic body to that enemy array. So when we go back to the scripts, we go back to our turrets, we're going to say we're not going to append the body, we're going to append the body, get parent. So that will be our path follow to the or the main node of our tank scene. Of course, we can do exactly the same on body exited, but instead of append, we will erase that entry. Now, we could also say print here, and we can print the enemy array as these signals are being fired. And we're also 
for visual demonstration, we're gonna go over to debug and we're gonna set the visible collision shapes on. Now, when we play the game, we hit new game and we start building a turret. We have the green range indicator that we programmed in a previous tutorial. And when I click that turret, now you can see exactly the same range of the collision shape of the area 2D that we call range. And of course, this is going to be tracking our enemies. Now, when we were to hit play, tanks come rolling in and as they enter the collision shape, you can see in the print right here, we got two path follow 2Ds with their particular node ID. And these are the two enemies that we have to be cycling through as we start shooting them down. All right, so now we have a range indicator for our gun tier one turret, but we wouldn't wanna go through this whole process for every single turret. That would make it well, a little bit too uh, manual, I guess. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of code that is gonna set the range of that range area 2D automatically based on that data sheet that we have in our singleton. So let's do that. First thing you wanna do is we wanna make sure that we know when this turret is actually built and when we're just in the preview. Because remember, when we are building a turret and we see the preview on the map that turns green or red, depending on whether we can build it, that is an instance of this gun tier one as well. And we don't want the turret to rotate at that moment to already start tracking enemies. We only want that stuff to happen once we have actually built the turret. So we're gonna add a variable that's gonna say build and build by default is going to be false. So by default, we're gonna assume that the turret has not been built yet. And then under the ready function, we are going to be adding all this quite a long line. When this turret is ready, so when it's loaded, we're gonna check if it is built. So this has to be turned into true before we start doing this. Then we're gonna get the self, get node range coalition shape 2D. So that is gonna be here on the gun tier one, range coalition shape. And then we're gonna get the shape that actually gets us the shape of the circle shape right here, then in that circle shape, we can set the radius. And of course the radius needs to be a half times our game data singleton, tower data, self get name, that's gonna return us the gun T1, and then we want the range variable. So that line right there is a little bit on the long side, but that is what that does is actually get this 350 range out of gun tier one tower data on the game data singleton. So with that, we now automatically set the range of our turret as we start building it. All we gotta make sure is that we make sure build becomes true. So we're gonna select that variable, or I'm gonna copy paste that va uh, variable. I'm gonna go over to my game scene script and underneath here, I'll scroll down to verify and build. Here we already see this new tower instant position. We're simply gonna say new tower dot, and then we'll paste build and we're gonna set that to true. So only once we verify and build the turret, the build variable is set to true and we can start setting its range. And we can actually test that. Let's go over to our gun tier one coalition shape. Let's set the radius to something very small, for example, 20. Now, if we were to hit play new game, we build a turret, we can still see the, that that 175 coalition shape is visible as that is what now the code is handling for us. Now, if we open up our missile T1 turret, you're like, okay, how can we quickly add this to this missile version? We're simply gonna right click missile T1, but instead of adding a child node, going through the process, adding the coalition shape, adding the shape, etc., etc., we're now going to merge from scene. That is a way to merge other nodes from another scene into this one. And basically we're just copy pasting through uh, a menu. So we're gonna go over to scenes, we're gonna go to turrets. We've already built it on the gun tier one. We're gonna select range and with shift, I'm also selecting collision shape 2D. We hit okay, there they are. And now we simply have to select range and we gotta make sure we connect those signals up. And you'll see as we do this, connect missile T1, when we go to the script of missile T1, you see that our functions are not here because Godot, the engine, recognizes that in the inherited script turrets.gd, those functions already exist and they're now connected. So now if I were to hit play, new game, and I were to build a missile turret, you can see we now have the range 
and the collision shape of the missile turret as well. And as you can see, that is a lot bigger than the one of gun tier one. And that is of course, because in our game data, the range of our missile tier one turret is 550. So now we have a variable way to make sure that the collision range or the collision shape of our range area 2D is always according to our data that we have given our game and it's adjusted automatically. And you can quickly add this on every single turret that you maybe have built so far. So now that we have this, we can start making sure that our turrets start tracking our tanks. We can handle that entire logic of enemy selection in our turret script. So that's the general script that applies to all turrets. I've already added a new function here, select enemy. We'll get to that in a moment. The first thing we'll need is we need an, a variable for the enemy that we are going to be tracking. And I'm going to replace the physics process function with an updated version with a couple more lines. Now under the physics process function, we're checking if enemy array that is the array of enemies that we're adding enemies to as they enter and removing enemies from as they exit our range. We're going to check if the size of that array that's going to return us an integer is something different than zero. In other words, we're checking if there is an enemy to track in the first place. We're also verifying if the current turret is built. This last added variable and build, make sure that this turret doesn't start turning when you're only trying to sort of like pre-build it, to have the build preview. In the build preview, the turret is just going to be stationary from now. And only once you build it, it starts tracking the enemies. If this is both true, then we're going to be selecting an enemy. That is the new code that we got here. Now, before we get into that, once we have selected an enemy, we start turning the turret to it. And then uh, if that is not the case, so either we are not built or we uh, don't have an enemy to track, then we're simply going to say the enemy is null. So we also erase any enemy that we may have set previous in the previous seconds. Once we've got that and we turn, we of course don't want to turn anymore to the get global mouse position. This is no longer relevant. Now we are going to be turning to the enemy dot position. So the enemy dot position is going to be from this enemy variable. And the position is of course going to take the position of that one particular enemy that we are selecting. Now the question, how do we select an enemy? And how do we prioritize between different enemies if we got multiple of them? To do that, we first have a new array. This is called the enemy progress array. The progress stands for how far the enemy has progressed along the path. What we're going to do for every index in enemy array, so for every enemy in there, we're going to be appending a new entry into our enemy progress array, and that is the offset of i. Now, what that is, is easy to explain when we go back to the blue tank scene. When we select the top node here, the blue tank in the inspector, you can see that there's a variable called here offset. And this is the distance along the path that it has traveled so far. So if we have a quick look at the map, the game scene here, our path starts on the bottom left. So the start is zero. And as the tank travel this path, it tracks how many pixels it has traveled. And all the way on the, on the end here, that maybe ends up to be like 3000 pixels or something like that. So we are adding that. If we go back to turrets, we're adding that offset to the enemy progress array then we are going to be verifying what the enemy is with the maximum offset. In other words, we're going to be prioritizing the enemy that is closest to finishing the path because those are our enemies that pose the most risk to us. So that's going to be the, the default behavior of this turret. So once we have all those offsets in our enemy progress array, we want to know what the maximum offset is because that's the enemy that's furthest along the path. We can get that with this max function here on the enemy progress array. Then once we know the maximum value, we want to know the index of that maximum value because the index of that maximum value on the enemy progress array is the same index value of our enemy in the enemy array. So we're going to find the max offset in the enemy progress array that returns us the index value. And then we use that enemy index in, on the enemy array to return us the enemy, which is of course the path followed to the node of the blue tank, which we can use the position of for our code where our turret needs to look at. So once we've got all that, we hit play and I've actually Let's do that real fast. I'll show you how to do that in the game scene. I've changed 
the seconds between the two blue tanks spawning so they are a little bit further apart so we can see the behavior of this turret a little bit better so now when i have new game i were to build a turret here and we're going to play this game we now see this tank rolling in turret is turning its attention to it and as this tank leaves it will see, start to prioritize the other tank which is of course less far along the path and that's why it stays on the other tank for as long as possible even if that other tank is entering its area 2d let's, uh, let's show that again let's hit play so this tank is in the area 2d and as the other tank comes in they're both in the area 2d but the turret stayed on that other tank for as long as it could shoot it because that is furthest along the path and that's the behavior we would like to see in a tower defense game now some tower defense game allows you uh, or allow you to click that turret and to set some different uh, behavior that's of course possible as well we're not going to go that far in this tutorial but that's something you can maybe experiment coding yourself it would mean that you have to build a state machine on your turrets.gd script so that depending on the type of behavior you want the turret to do it's going to be taking a different formula to select the correct enemy all right that was it guys now your turrets are tracking your targets and you have an easy way to add this range indicator to all your turrets very quickly in case you already got a couple more turrets than i have in my demo project i hope you like this tutorial if you did smash that like button hit subscribe don't forget that bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on the next tutorial when we actually start shooting finally i'll see you then and until then keep on gaming keep on coding see you later guys